Welcome back to the next part of the Maui pipeline series. In the previous video, we discussed creating a release pipeline for our Android Maui builds to release to the Google Play Store. And in this video, we'll create our iOS release pipeline to release to App Store Connect. So we can get started by clicking on the new and selecting new release pipeline. We can just select an empty job and the first stage we can call release to test flight. I'm going to rename the release pipeline to iOS. We can add our artifact in here and we can select our source build pipeline as our build pipeline and we can leave the default version to latest and we can add that we can then go to our release to test flight job and we want this agent to run on azure pipelines for the agent we can select mac os 14. on our artifacts we want to deselect the windows and android artifacts so that it doesn't download those artifacts but only the ios one we can then add a step to our job if you search for apple app and we want to add the apple app store release step so you can also promote a different track once you've done your release right from your release pipeline but for now i'm just going to add the release step and then it's asking us which authentication method do we want to use to communicate with App Store Connect. So I'm going to use the App Store Connect API key since it's the easiest option. So we're going to need three variables here. So I'm just going to start creating them. App Store Connect API key ID. And the second one is the App Store Connect API issuer ID. And lastly, we need the actual API key that Space64 encoded. Great. So now that we have our variable specified here, we can head over to App Store Connect and actually set up our API key that will provide us these values that we can then add to our library as secret variables. So head over to App Store Connect and sign into your account. You want to go to the Users and Access tab here at the top and then select Integrations. And we, it's already selected the App Store Connect API, which is exactly what we want to set up for this. So you can click on the plus button to add an App Store Connect API key. So I'm just going to call this Maui Pipelines key. And the access can be an app manager since it just needs to upload and promote. I'm going to generate that. Now we need to be careful. It only shows the download option once. So you need to make sure you download this and then it won't show again. So I downloaded a .p8 file for us, which contains the API key that, that we're going to use. And the other two keys that we need to have is this issuer ID at the top and then the key ID as well. So we can head over back to DevOps and I'm going to start creating these variables. So I'm going to open my library in a new tab and go into pipeline variables. You can also put this in a new variable group if you want to. And I'm just going to start adding them in here. So we have the App Store Connect API key, the App Store Connect API issuer ID. And then lastly, we have our App Store Connect API key. Great. So for the App Store Connect API key, if you go to App Store Connect, 
You can copy it by clicking on this copy key ID. And this is going to be a secret variable. So remember to click on the lock. Next, we have the issuer ID. So I'm also going to make that a secret variable. Ooh, and the issuer ID is mentioned here at the top. So it, there's also a copy button here. So we can paste that in. And then lastly, we just need the App Store Connect API key. So the API key we need to get from the P8 file that we downloaded. So you can go ahead and move that file into a location where you can open a command prompt. We need to encode that into a base64 format. Great. So I've moved the file into this folder. So I'm just going to open a command prompt here. And what we're going to use to encode this to base64 is a utility called certutil. So if we just Google that and go to the Microsoft Learn link. It gives you an example, and we are looking for the one that encodes it as base64, which is just dash encode. So they give us a little example here. So it's certutil dash encode, in file, out file. So pretty basic stuff. So we can go certutil and want to add a dash encode. Our in files name is this long now. I'm just going to change this to in file, in file dot p8. Our out file, I'm just going to do a dot text. And there we go. The out file will be in the following format. I've obfuscated the actual characters here so that I don't give away my API key over the internet. But it's going to be in the format where it has begin certificate at the start and end certificate at the end. What we're interested in is in the section in between. However, there's currently carriage return characters at each of these lines that we want to remove. So you can just go to the start and backspace here so that it ends up to be one long string that ends with an uh, equal sign. And there we go. So we can then copy this entire thing and paste it into our API key variable. And there we go. We have all three our App Store variables specified. And it is linked over here. Uh, so it gives you a lot of other options to specify that bundle ID. Uh, it already uses the wildcard characters to find the IPA and the artifacts that we selected. Um, but you can specify things like the app specific Apple ID and so on just to be 100% sure that you are targeting the right app, but it's not required. So now we just need to link these, the variable group containing these variables to our release pipeline by going to the variables tab on the variables group, we want to select link variable group and it's the pipeline variables and we can link it to the whole release pipeline and save our changes. So before we can actually create our first release, we just need to go to app store connect and actually create the app. So go to the apps tab and click the plus button and select new app. We want to release to iOS in this case, unless you're targeting one of the other platforms, then you can just give it a name. You have to choose a primary language. I'm just going to choose English UK. And then you can select the bundle ID that we created in one of the previous steps. The SKU is just a unique identifier for your app. So typically you can 
just give it your app's name and the year that you're first releasing this app or any other convention that you typically like to follow as an identifier for your app. And then lastly, you need to select the access. So I'm just gonna choose full access here. I'm not gonna actually release this, but great. So we've created our app and then we can finally do our first release. And we can finally create our first release. So it says the release was created and we can go and view the logs. And we can see it successfully uploaded the package to App Store Connect, but it still needs to process and this can take quite, a, quite some time. So just be patient with it. And there we go. It successfully completed the upload to App Store Connect. And if we go to the test flight tab of our app, we can see the um, version code number four has been released, version 103. You can then also add an internal testing group here at the bottom and add any members that you would want to be able to test this app under the tester section, which would allow them to install your app via the test flight app. And here you can see where I'm downloading the app via test flight and running the app that was built with the Azure DevOps pipelines. So well done on creating your iOS release pipeline and successfully releasing your iOS app to App Store Connect via Azure DevOps. If you found this video useful, please hit the like and subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the next videos where we'll be covering a lot more .NET content in the near future. See you next time.